Hello and welcome to the Keith Barker channel. It's great to have you here. Our goal is to give you tips and tools today to help you get your CCNA, not just for that certification, but for that certification and beyond. And I want to cover two basic things in this quick video, uh, what I intend to be a quick video. And that is uh, section 1.12 from the CCNA blueprint, which is all about the fundamentals of virtualization. And I wanted to talk about that just for a few moments. And then I wanted to give you a behind the scenes look at what I'm doing as I continue to grow my skills and practice in the world of Cisco and networking by using virtualization. So let's go to a, a chalkboard and let's talk about some basics. And then I'll show you exactly what I've got cooking um, in my home lab. So this is the internet <clears throat> connected to my home network. And then I've got my PC that I'm sitting at right there. This PC is a Windows 10 machine. Uh, there we go. And this one I'm currently using. I've got OBS running. This is my software I'm using. I've got Epic Pen software, so I used to draw, and other software running to make this all possible. Okay, so um, there's my PC, one PC, ta-da. Now, if we wanted to, we could take that PC, and I can install some special software. So I'd still be running Windows 10, but I could add some additional software called a, called a hypervisor, and that would allow me to add, actually run virtual machines on this computer, so it would look like this. So here's the computer. I've got Win 10. I check my feedback monitor. Good, good, good. I've got Win 10, and then I could run a hypervisor. I'll draw that right here. What's all the hype? It's a hypervisor. That's what all the hype is. And then the hypervisor, I could go ahead and run virtual machines. And you might say, Keith, what, what virtual machines might you be running? Well, I could run other Windows 10 machines, or I could run other um, like virtual machines like Cisco Modeling Labs or EVNG or something else. And those are all running in that virtualized environment. Now, they don't really know it's a virtualized environment. And that's the beauty of a hypervisor because we can run their operating systems and they think they're just running on a computer when really they're running inside of this hypervisor. Now, when it's done this way, when you have a, <clears throat> a Windows machine or a base operating system from a like Linux, Mac, Windows, um, and base operating system, and then you're running a hypervisor on top of that, that's referred to as a type two hypervisor. So if you ever hear of a type two hypervisor, think, oh, they've got a normal computer, <laughs> fairly normal computer. And then on top of that, they're running hypervisor software. And then within that hypervisor software, that's providing the virtual environment for these other devices. Let me give you an example of a type two hypervisor. Let me go ahead and clear that screen off just for a moment. And let me give you a full screen look. Ah! This, is be this is behind the scenes, um, what it looks like on my desktop at the moment. And let's go ahead and search for VMware Workstation. VMware Workstation, has a, a couple flavors. Uh, one is Pro, and that is the uh, for sale version. And then they have VMware Workstation Player, which is more limited, but it's free. And this is an example of a Type 2 hypervisor. So here I have Cisco Modeling Labs, and it could as a VM that could run here. But I could also run GNS3 VMs and even G VMs and other virtual machines here as well. It's an example of a Type 2 hypervisor. All right, I'll close that. Next, let me go back to a smaller screen here. Next, the other option is, <clears throat> Why, why, why not waste, but how do we make it more efficient? What if we could take a system, as I get my pen back out here, what if we could take a system and instead of having an operating system like Windows or something down here, what if we just took the hypervisor and installed it directly on the hardware? So we wouldn't have a Windows base operating system here or Linux or Macintosh. What we could just do is install a hypervisor. And if we install the hypervisor on bare metal, this is called a bare metal hypervisor, um, an example of that would be VMware's ESXi. And that is also referred to as type one, as a bare metal hypervisor. So in my lab, what I did is I took this blade server that I bought used and I installed ESXi from VMware directly on it. And they'll give you a free license for one server. Um, so that's parts free. I installed there and then I can just run virtual machines on top of that. It's amazing, it's amazing. So, um, so we could have CML, Cisco Modeling Labs, EVNG, GNS3, uh, Windows, Linux, other servers as well, all running as VMs on top of that hardware. So <clears throat> let me share with you a couple of really cool things. Let me go to full screen for this about how I set this up. Um, what I did was I got this R60 server and it has, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, this is so stinking cool. It's got this thing called the integrated up here the integrated Dell Remote Access Controller 8. It came with it. And what this is like, it's like a little monitoring system that's looking at your server. So you could actually remotely connect to this server and install like VMware ESXi directly on it from this. So if you're gonna get a Dell server, make sure you get one with the uh, 
IDRAC, the Inter Integrated Dell Remote Access Controller. It's amazing. So um, part of that is I can get a console. So this is a console through IDRAC <laughs> right to my ESXi host. This is the Bumblebee look. That's what I call it. Uh, that would, this is what we'd see if we had a, a monitor plugged into that server. So that server's in the other room. I don't have to be physically next to it. It can get loud. It can start blowing the fans really hard. And I don't have to hear it because it's in, in the other room. And also I have direct access to the console through iDRAC if I want. Okay, so that is <clears throat> access to the EXI, ESXi host. We can also log in to the ESXi host. So here's the login page. So this is, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit F5. <laughs> Give it a little refresh there. And it'd be really awesome if it worked. All right, there we go. So this is an example of a type one hypervisor where it is, this is ESXi installed directly on that, that server. And I've got two labs running, two VMs running at the moment. I have CML, which is the Cisco modeling lab. And I've got EVNG Pro, which is another uh, emulator, but they're just VMs. So these VMs are just living in this environment. Happy, happy, happy. And if we look at the host and let's look at the monitor. So with both those systems running, Cisco Modeling Labs and with EVNG running, and they both have like 12 devices each, and it's using a, a good chunk of resources. So that's CPU. And if we want to take a look at each of them, here is the EVNG topology. <laughs> and I'm using the, the little trick with the VRFs that I talked about previously. So this is not something that you would have to do or want to do right away when you're starting CCNA, but it's something you might want to keep an eye towards as far as being able to quickly build a topology, spin it up, get it working, and um, have a lot of flexibility with it. So this is the EVNG environment that's running as a VM on the ESXi host, which is a hypervisor from VMware. And this is the Cisco Modeling Labs with the same amount of devices running in uh, the hypervisor as a VM. So again, as a review here, here's the two VMs, CML and EVNG. And if we wanted to open up consoles to any one of those, we could. So I set this up. So I've got all my connections here for Cisco Modeling Labs, <laughs> and I've got all these connections for the EVNG hosts. So if we go to Cisco Modeling Labs, there's R1, so IP interface brief. All right, and make sure my full screen is showing, good enough. And it has the IP address of 221, if we do a show VRF. Uh, just based on what I talked about in a previous video about managing our devices, I put that interface in a VRF, gig 00. And then if we open up the uh, EVNG router one, and we do a show IP interface brief. He's at 121. So CML is at 221 and even G's at 121. Now, <laughs> here's the fun part. It's so fun. If we wanted to connect those worlds together, if you wanted to connect your physical world together and your logical world together and multiple virtual worlds together for your networking, we can. And I did. So I've got Cisco Modeling Labs with a connection to a real network. I've got EVNG connected to a real network and I can ping between them. So if we try to ping, I use VRF MGMT because I'm in that, the only IP address I have so far on this router is in that VRF. And I'm gonna ping the IP address of 192.168.1. So take a look at it real quick. It is 221. So the first one, because of ARP, always gets chunked out on a Cisco router, but then we have success. And we do a show CDP neighbors. We are good to go. So part of what I wanted to share with you in this video was the concept of virtualization. With the idea is that with a hypervisor, you can create a virtualized environment for a VM, a virtual machine to live in. In our example here, I demonstrated or showed two different types of hypervisors. A type one, which is a bare metal hypervisor, which is running on ESXi on the, on the server and a type two, which is an example of uh, VMware Workstation, professional or, or um, the, <laughs> the player version, which runs on top of a Windows or a Linux computer. If you're running a Windows machine, <clears throat> they've got a version from VMware called a VMware Fusion that's also a type two hypervisor that runs on top of the Mac OS. All right, so that's what I wanted to share with you as far as a little sneak peek behind the scenes of what I do <laughs> to help X to help speed along the uh, development and practice that I need to do. Um, because if, when I can build a topology very, very quickly and then practice and tear it down and rebuild another one, including using some automation, which we'll get to in subsequent videos, 
it makes it a lot more efficient and effective for hands-on practice, which is, for the CCNA candidate, the number one thing you need to focus on doing. So Packet Tracer is a wonderful tool and all you need. However, as you start to progress beyond CCNA, I would encourage you to take a look at a few of these videos and identify what could I do to go ahead and set up an emulated environment that I could actually start practicing with more gear or different topologies and not have to have the physical gear for each and every time. So Packet Tracer, if you want to buy some other physical gear as you proceed, that's great too. But have a great time and do that hands-on practice. All right, I took a few moments longer than I intended to. Thanks for joining me in this uh, channel and this journey for your CCNA and beyond. And uh, I'm glad you're here. So I'll catch you in the next live event. Till then, be well, be safe, and be kind to others. Have a good day, everybody.